Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Rahim Mehta bringing you another video today on how to edit photos in Lightroom for beginners. Now, the reason I wanted to create this tutorial is that when I went on the internet, I realized that a lot of the tutorials that are out there are way too long. They spend way too much time talking about the layout and all these extra features and don't really spend time showing you how to actually edit photos. Or there are these videos that go right into the deep end and don't tell you things. And so I wanted to create a very efficient video just for you guys where I guarantee, I guarantee that if you watch the video entirely, that by the end of the video, your editing skills will skyrocket. So what we're going to do is I'm going to explain bits of editing and then we're going to edit two photos, one this and this, just to show you how to apply the basics that I'm going to be talking about. And without wasting any more of your time, let's just jump right into it. Although I would highly recommend for you guys to stick around as I explain the basic tools of Lightroom. However, if you think you're quite well versed with it, I will put timestamps for the edits. The landscape edit has a lot more slider changes compared to the portraits. Now, one of the first things that you always look at when you upload your raw file to Lightroom is you look at the histogram. And this is how it is divided. If I go here, it shows blacks, this is shadows. These are your highlights and this is your white. We're not going to talk about this area for now. And essentially what you want to do is you want to kind of move the major part of your graph to these three sections. And that kind of denotes that your image is properly exposed. So one of the first things that you always do is you correct your white balance. Now, if you've taken a raw file using a DSLR, you should have some samples over here. Or if you have some white parts in your image, you can always take your eyedropper tool and just click that. My white balance was pretty accurate, so I did not have to fix this a lot. But especially when you're doing portraits, you can always click that white part in the eye to get the white balance correct. The next thing that you always fix is exposure, which is basically just brightening up the image. And this, if you look at my graph, this is what it's doing. It starts moving towards the right. And that's essentially what you want to do. You don't want to bring it way too much that your highlights start blowing up but I'm just going to bring a little bit of detail and that would have looked good. What you do next is I don't really touch the contrast slider is because we add contrast in a different way later on. So I would suggest for you guys to skip this one, but it basically controls the contrast of your image. Your highlights control the super bright parts of your image. So we bring all the highlights down. As you can see, the image starts to have a lot more detail in its highlights. The shadows does the same thing. It increases just the shadows. As you can see, none of the exposure on this part of the image is increasing and it just raises shadows. Now whites and blacks, this can get a little bit tricky, but whites are basically extreme whites in your image and blacks can be extreme blacks in your image. And what I mean by that is, let's say if I bring my highlights all the way down, as you can see, my image looks a bit more dull. And if I just bring up the white slider, you can see I still have a lot of detail. However, a lot of the image looks way more vibrant and punchier. And that's basically what white values do. The black kind of does something in the opposite way. If I increase the blacks, it is increasing the absolute black value. And as you can see, this is supposed to be extreme black, but it has turned into like a faded black look. The next thing that we will talk about is the presence tab. And basically what texture does is it just increases a lot more detail in your textures by sharpening those pixels. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but you can see it has brought a lot more detail in your image. Clarity does something similar, but it does it in a way more drastic way. From a technical point of view, all it does is it increases the contrast of your midtones. So you obviously have to be very careful, but these kind of are quite similar. Dehaze again adds haze or removes haze from your image. If you've taken like a foggy image, if you dehaze it, you get like a way more punchier look. So that's what dehaze does. Next, we will talk about vibrance and saturation. I have a detailed video on this. I will link it in the description below. But what vibrance does it, it increases the color values. However, the colors that have the least amount of saturation increase more compared to the colors that already have a lot of saturation. As you can see, 
if I bump this up, you get a rather relative bump in colors. However, if I do it with saturation, you can see that the overall image starts getting very bright. The next thing is tone curves. This is again a complicated tool. I have a detailed video on this as well, link in the description. But this also controls your whites and black value, what we spoke about earlier. And if you want to give a nice punch to the shot. By default standards, a lot of people talk about the S curve, which is basically the letter S, and you create a midpoint and you bump up the highlights a bit and you bring in the shadows and gives it a more punchy look. As you can see, it has darkened the shadows and brightened the highlights. Over here, you also have the same thing with different color channels and this is used for color grading. Um, so let's say if I want to add yellow to it, I will bring it down. And if I want to add blue, I'll bring it up. These are basically yellow and blue are opposite colors. If I want to add like a moody filter kind of look or color grade to it, what I'm going to do is, again, this is details, but these are your shadows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the blues in the shadows and I'm going to drop this down. And as you can see, I have blues over here and yellows over here. So that's what tone curve does. The next panel is a super important panel, especially if you want to bring uh, life to your image. This is your hue, saturation, and luminance panel. What hues are, they're basically different colors. Uh, unfortunately, in Lightroom, you can only change hues of neighboring colors. So yellow and red, oranges and red, green to yellow, and stuff like that. So if I move it, you can see that's how it's changing the color of the image. Saturation basically controls the intensity of the color. So let's say if I bring up the blue all the way up, you can see it has made it so much more intense than it was earlier and I can remove blues altogether. And that's what saturation does. It controls the intensity of color. Luminance controls the brightness of colors. And remember how we talk about bright red and dark red, and that's basically what luminance controls. So if I bring my blue all the way down, you can see it's still blue, but it's a lot more darker than it was before. And that's basically what luminance controls. And you basically want to play with these to get the perfect balance of a good punchy edit. The next thing is split toning. It's basically, again, remember how I showed you the curves color grading where we had blue in the shadows and warmth in the rest of the image. That's essentially what you can do with all the colors over here. You basically pick a particular hue and let's say if I want to add yellow, I'm going to increase that in the highlights. You have a yellowish green tint and you can do that with shadows as well just to give like a nice color grade to your image. This is your detailed tab. So if you want to sharpen your image, you can bump this up. Effects basically adds if you want to add like a vignette to your shots. If I do this, if you want to bring more focus to that, you can control the different settings over here. Then you have all these tabs. This basically controls your crops. So if you want to crop for Instagram, you want to get that square crop, you can basically just use your different values over here and get one by one, four by five, whatever you're looking for. The next tool we have over here is the spot removal tool. Now this doesn't work as well as masking and obviously replacing things using clone stamp in Photoshop, but it uses AI and you can obviously use control. So let's say if I want to remove this distraction, you can see that it kind of does a decent job. You'll have to play around, fix the feather settings for you to get a good look. But yeah, this is essentially what it does. These are graduated filters. Let's say if you want to add a particular look just to like one part of the image. So let's say if I create this graduated filter, this is the area that the filter is going to affect. And I basically can add the same effects what we spoke about earlier. And that's what graduated filter does. And this is an adjustment brush. This is also the same thing. Just like the graduated filter, I can just paint certain areas around and can change settings over there. And yeah, that's about it. That was a quick wrap up of Lightroom. Now what we're going to do is we're going to begin editing this particular image. So the first thing I want to do is I want to reset everything. I want to increase the exposure a bit. 0.85. That looks good. That brought a lot of detail over here, but obviously we'll fix that as well. I'm going to reduce the highlights all the way down just so we get 
some detail over there that looks good i'm going to raise some of the shadows as well that looks good to me we'll add more contrast to it later on so we don't have to worry about that and i'm just going to add some white to add a bit more punch to the shot now because this doesn't include people and i'm fine getting that structural look i'm going to increase my clarity remember i said it adds midtones contrast to midtones so i'm just going to bump this up plus 22 because it gives like a nice look to it so you can see i flattened the image and i'll add contrast later on now vibrance and saturation i'm going to bump up the vibrance just because there are so many colors and i really want them to pop out so i'm going to increase this plus 25 that looks good and then maybe i'm going to increase a bit of the sh saturation as well that looks nice and vibrant although the green is too strong but we can fix that later i'm going to come down i'm just going to add a bit more i think i raised way too much shadows so i'm going to just reduce the shadows a bit i think i liked bit of the drama we had in the shadows that looks good as you can see I've added a bit more depth to the darkness of this image then I'm gonna come to the HSL tab now a couple of changes I want to do over here the first thing is I'm gonna take this I'm gonna turn it oh, this had like a reddish pinkish look but I like the whole yellow and green harmony we have going over here <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start changing it towards a yellow and orange look. That looks good to me. I basically want to change these reddish tones again to a more yellow orange look. That looks good to me as well. This basically adds a bit of yellow to the greens. That looks good. You'll notice that sometimes yellow slider also controls the green. It's just that you have a mixture of these colors. Um, I'm going to make these greens a bit more tonal as I don't like natural greens that much. This is just a personal preference. That looks good to me. And I want to turn this into a slight cyanish look. Now I know this looks super super bright. These both these colors look super bright, but we'll fix that. Don't worry. We'll go to saturation, and I'm gonna bump up the saturation for the reds to bring this color out. I'm gonna do the same with orange. Again, I know this looks super bright, but wait for it. Again, remember I said I don't like really bright greens, and I think it's distracting from the image. So I'm just gonna bring the greens all the way down. So you have like a nice subtle look that looks good to me. And I think the saturation in the sky is way too much. <clears throat> so I'm going to bring that down as well. That has started to look really good. Now I want to play around with the bright values a bit. Brighten this a bit up. I'm going to brighten the orange as well just to give it a more punch. I'm going to brighten some of the leaves as well and darken the greens i mean brighten the greens and the yellows uh, remember they both control it but yeah i think that looks pretty good this is your before image and this is after it has started to look pretty good now i'm going to start using the graduated filters next what i'm going to use is i want to add like a nice sun flare as if the sun is coming from this side it's going to be a challenge because this is like the most darkest part of the image but i'm gonna bring this all the way up i obviously want to add a lot of brightness to the shot because we are basically showing a sun leak uh, obviously you want to add warmth so i'm gonna go absolutely bananas with it as you can see it looks a lot brighter than I would want I want the yellow in it but I don't want it so intense so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the saturation all the way down this is how it looked before and this is after essentially what you want to do is really pay attention to a lot of colors in your image and go from there the next thing that we'll be editing is the portrait now this is a relatively simple shot compared 
to the landscape we edit but the first thing that we'll do over here is as you can see this is quite overexposed so the first thing I'll do is poof, bring the highlights all the way down and then remember I spoke about using the eyedropper to get the white balance right I'm gonna click over here and as you can see my picture has gotten warmer this is how the image looked like when I shot it now this is where I'll go from now I'll just increase the exposure a tad bit I also want slight details in the shadows and yeah as you can see still a, a majority of my image is in shadows and blacks but I kind of went for that look so that works fine for this one what I also want to do is I want to add some blacks back to his hair and beard just to give it that punch and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint over there and I'm just going to bring my shadows down just to give it more punchy looks that looks pretty good to me I'm up to my hue saturation and what I want to do is I want to separate these orange and yellow tones a lot more just so we have a bit more contrast so I'm going to go to my yellow slider which is this I'm going to add a bit more of a green look to it yeah that looks good this basically will make him pink or green I don't want to touch that and I think that now his skin tone looks a lot more orange than that so I think that's a good color separation I'm gonna to go to luminance I'm gonna to go to saturation I'm gonna increase the saturation of his suit I still think we can add a lot more dimension to it by reducing the brightness and I think that is starting to look pretty good I'm gonna to go to my tone curves just add a bit more punch over there and yeah this is your before and this is after if you want to add that color grade we spoke about earlier I love doing this adding blues in my shadows and warmth in my highlights you already have a lot of warmth over here so just press over here and just add some blues in your shadows and you are done this is your before image and this is your after and that's about it there's a quick and short tutorial on how can we go about editing photos in Lightroom. I know we only scratched the surface. I have tons of tutorials that you can probably look into. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I shall see you guys next time. Take care.